Whoa! Look at this! You don't see this in a record store every day. It's a high five room. And so we did not plan on coming here, but I saw this on Google, the end of an ear store, and I'm like, hey man, hey look, they got some high five, and they do. There's lots of stuff in here. We got speakers all the way across the top. You got some vintage Wharfdales, RDLs, Sonys, KLHs. You got Dayton's, JBLs, Polk, Sonys. We love this like light wood looking JBL. That's super cool too. And then we got all this vintage high five right here, but we're not gonna do that just yet. We're gonna go back, back this way. We're gonna start on the side. So we got a B&O turntable right here. Got your music hall classic, my favorite. Uh, this is a, a lot of these models look the same as a project. I probably should have known that. <laughs> you got a dual 701 up here. It's like a Technics 1200 MK2. You got your Thorns TD150. Got the Granite Kenwood right here, the KD550. These are really, I, you will talk about a heavy turntable. Try making a turntable out of granite. Nice. Talking about granite, this Velodyne actually has it across the bottom, so Velodynes weren't heavy enough. You got a granite Velodyne, so that's a massive one. We've had one in the shop before, just a massive speaker, and some other vintage Wharfdales right here, so that, that's pretty cool. The nice Pioneer right on top, the PLA45D. But the most fun part is that original Pioneer 45 adapter that they got sitting right on top. That's an awesome piece right there. Then across, we got a couple more turntables. We have a Rega P3. We have a Soda. Hit. Ooh. Underneath, got a Music Hall 1.5. And then a Pioneer PL530. I love the Pioneer. The plinth on this is very nice. I don't know if that's original or aftermarket. The aluminum is in great shape. That's a nice condition looking table. Underneath, we got some Mitsubishi speakers. They kind of look like the uh, JBLs with the white driver. And then these look like Avid 102s, Avid 102As. And of course, who would not know the Bose 901s with the stand and the EQ. And then the Klipsch KLF 10s. These are very, very nice speakers. So you have dual 10 inch drivers with the Klipsch horn in the wood frame. I mean, come on, right? Really cool. Now we got all the vintage here, but not yet. That's coming later. We're gonna skip over here and look at some of this. We have a couple tube amps here. You got your Dayton. Up here, you have a Music Reference RM200. I'm not that familiar with that, but it does have Gold Lion tubes. If you look closely, there's some Gold Lions in there. Gold Lion tubes are very, very nice tubes. Now under here, you have a Sound Craftsman Phase Control Regulator. I don't know, never seen that one before in my life. And you got a silver Z Phono. That's pretty cool. They still, Parasound still makes the Z Phonos, but only in black. Silver one's a nice touch. You got a Carver CT24 preamp and tuner with the buttons on the front, which are actually rubber. So if you see when I press them, they're actually made of rubber. Underneath, you have a Rotel AVR. Going across the side, you have one of the Techniques. Uh, this is a preamp, the SU9070. I love that series of Techniques. Very, very nice. NAD Power Amplifier 2700, that series is wonderful. These work really well as mono blocks. Then we have a Denon AV receiver. Then over here, you got your Hathler 500. You don't usually see the 500s. Usually you see what's more in the 200 series, like this XL280, which is also a model you don't actually see that much. That 500's really big. Tube Audio Design, Tad 1000, I'm not super familiar with that one but they look really really well made so this is a cool cassette deck i've seen this one before the f660 from iowa it has this little control panel in the front which is definitely an awesome feature then we have a giant harman kardon citation 16 and actually the power meters if you look at the lights on this go from green to yellow to red so as you drive your power up that is your power meter which it's an awesome design up top you got your Sony DVP-S9000 ES. The ES series from Sony is incredible, and this is a ridiculously big D. 
DVD CD player. So SA CD player, it's heavy as anything. Great model. A couple other laser discs for those of you like Duderman that likes laser discs, they're right there. Let's see, you get a couple of VCRs, you got a Macintosh C24 preamp. It's a great preamp in really nice condition. I think a lot of the stuff here is in really, really nice condition. So it's a solid state preamp. Wonderful stuff right there. You got a dual cassette deck from Kenwood. I like how they have the cassettes on top of that. You got the VPI Scout turntable that I'm gonna listen. I'm actually not gonna touch because everything else I always touch, but I'm not gonna do it. Audible Illusions. I've actually had this one in before. It's a big machine piece of equipment and it comes with the external power supply. And then you have a couple name pieces down here. Nothing, nothing super fun to look at, but they make really nice equipment. Ah, so this is why they're turned in towards where they sit. So these are your Yamaha NS1000s. You hear a lot about these. So this is one of the most famous speakers from Yamaha. And it has this like nice metal grill over top the driver and over top the mid and the tweeter. Beautiful speakers. These are in really nice shape. Even the grills are in really nice shape. The grills are heavy too, man. So I understand why these aren't turned out and they're turned in because whoever sits here probably listens to these. I don't think I've ever had a pair of those. I had one one time at the shop, but not two. So back here, you have the RT701. So it's not a 707, it's a 701, which means it does not have the auto reverse function over here. So if you ever wonder what's the difference, 707, auto reverse, 701 does not have the auto reverse. And the same goes for the 900 series. The 909 has auto reverse, the 901 does not. My favorite rotor reel, this series, doesn't matter to me if it has auto reverse. 701, 707, my favorite rule. A Dynalab tuner. This is one of the best tuners on the market, period. We had one not too long ago. I'm like, ah, it's not that much to it. This is a wonderful tuner. So if you ever see one of these, grab it up. It's nice. Uh, an Akai 4000 DS. Akai's are really nice rotor reels because they have glass heads and the heads will never ruin. Coming up here. Ah, look, it's a Hitachi. It's very nice. Unitorque HT550. You know, I don't know that I've ever seen that model. I actually really like how they have the little levers on the cut and the speed select. I think that's a pretty cool way of controlling it. So now, now that we've gone through everything else, let's get to the vintage section and check it out. All right, so we're gonna start up here. We have the 30 watt per channel, 1030 integrated amp from Marantz. Very popular models. You see a lot of these, you see a lot of the 1060s. It's great integrated for really any use. Now underneath of it, you have the model 27, uh, which you don't see as often. This is a receiver. This is gonna be your early 70s, late 60s. It's very big height wise, if you look compared to a lot of other receivers, which going over here, you have uh, a SX434. We love the 434 series. That's gonna be your 1974 from Pioneer. And then underneath you have a 771. We saw an 881 earlier. I think we saw a 440. I don't know, I kind of lose track. But the, the 881, 771, they're the biggest models in the series and they're very, very nice. Really love the green display on that one. Super nice model. And here you get a, a newer Marantz PM5005, a Hitachi. So I haven't seen this one. So this is definitely a late 60s Hitachi. Almost looks like how the Pioneers looked in the late 60s. Uh, the SR 3200. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that model at all, but I'm thinking it's made just like the Pioneers. Underneath one of our other favorite models, the Sony's are a wonderful receiver. The SCR7045, clicky, clicky. Very nice, very nice, shiny knobs. I love how the light reflects off all these knobs and they do it really in any lighting. As long as there's light, it's gonna reflect, look really, really nice. Uh, so beautiful, you know, that one, maybe the dial isn't as nice looking, you know, it lights up from the sides, but the, the way the light reflects on that, just a beautiful, beautiful receiver that you'd want to add to your collection for sure. Going over here, we have the 20 watt Marantz 2220. Remember for Marantz, you can tell the watt is just from the number there. So the 22 means it is going to be a two channel. The two means zero. And then you have a 20 watt. If you go to 2325, that means it's a two channel at 125 watts. And then if the model is like a 4325, it's gonna be a four channel at 125. So that's how you can tell what the wattage is. Unless there's a B series, then it usually adds a couple watts. Uh, but for the most part, that's how you're gonna tell. Beautiful Moranth. As you see, sometimes we see where the the black dial goes down and the buttons are in the dial. This one has the silver built up, which I do really like. 
Uh, I have a hard time choosing which Morant's version I like the best. So next we have another one that I don't see very often. It actually looks kind of like the above one, which is a Yamaha, but this is a Hitachi. I actually really like this one. I don't think I've ever really seen this one, the HA330. You have these... Oh, Yes, please. You can tell it's built almost like a military uh, machine, I guess. You can you can feel, oh, I love it. I don't know. Can we fit this home on the plane? Uh, you can try. I can try. My suitcase <laughs> is that big. Then you got the Yamaha CR420. Excellent series. I love how they had the little Yamaha ortho. Orth <laughs> orthopedic orthodynamic headphone cover a lot of the yamahas have that so that it covers it up and still tells you hey buy yamaha headphones so this is a really cool model the onkyo not the most popular but the onkyo tx220 this receiver actually has painted on uh font on the front for all of the writing so it wipes off very easily but it's like a more rose gold type cover champagne as you might call it instead of silver so it's a series that's unrecognizable uh you always know what it is i don't think that's really what unrecognizable means but we'll just go with it great series integrated amp receivers whatever it is you got a techniques sa 5170 this is a great series and these even came to where you get the big monster receiver looking like this very nice series from techniques and yes it's techniques. Unless you're in another part of the world, then it could be techniques, but we're gonna go with techniques because we're in the US. So up here, we're gonna go with the Kenwood model KR44. Not as familiar with this one. This is definitely 60s, right? So you got the, the wood on the front, which is really cool. You have the flip switches that are black. So telltale signs that it is from the 60s year. I'm not exactly sure. And then underneath, this model's really cool. Talking about another Kenwood, the KA7002 is very nice. This is a wonderful integrated amp. You actually have lights that will light up as your indicators wherever you change your source. I really like that model. It reminds me kind of the Pioneer with some of these push buttons. Very cool. Kenwood's always, always sound really good when you press the buttons, right? Going down, we got an Akai AA1125 receiver. You don't see too many in this very thin line. Comparing it to a typical vintage receiver, it's gonna be a lot uh, shorter height-wise. Underneath, you got a Sansui Solid State 4000. Now you're going back a little bit, right? This is probably early 70s, maybe even going back to the late 60s. One of the earlier Solid State Sansui's right after they moved on from the tubes, which makes me think it's a little early 70s, but beautiful model, the Solid State 4000. And then you got a Project One Mark IV. So remember the Project Ones are from Pacific Stereo and some of the other stereo companies if I'm not wrong. Wasn't there, just, just going off memory. They made some really nice equipment, made just like a Pioneer. So by the looks of the front of this, you know, some of the Akai's also went slanted. If you notice, instead of being straight, it's actually slanted. And this one's not like it, but if you look at the two series, which is the 19, so this is a 1974 Pioneer. If you go back to the 72s, they're actually a little slanted. Getting some Pioneer vibes, some Sansui vibes in there, a little bit of everything. You know, it was one of those off-brand receivers, but a very nice one. And here is one of those receivers, and it's not slanted. Maybe I'm thinking of another year. So this is the 72 Pioneer, more of that champagne face, Pioneer SX626, which one of, was one of their higher models for back then. And no, this is not a smoke stain. This is how it came. And you have an NAD. 368. That's a current model. But coming over to the really nice ones, you have the very, very, very popular Morantz 2270s. So 2270s in two different versions here, or wood cases at least. So this is a 70 watt per channel. One of the most sought after Morantz's out there. Big in size, nice power, looks really good. One of my favorites. I used to have one, but we, we sold it and bought an oven. But that's okay because now I can eat. And as you can tell, I eat. A lot. So very nice. You got base mid treble control. So it's kind of like a monster receiver, even though it's not over 100 watts. This was actually Morantz's most powerful receiver when it came out and actually was right before the stereo war started with the Pioneer SX1010. So this was like, oh yeah, the most powerful receiver out there. And then Pioneer said, hey, did I say Pioneer on the last time? Yeah, the Pioneer SX1010 came out and said, nope, we rock. We rule the stereo wars and they kicked it off. So going down, here's just another version of it. I don't think I can really tell anything besides the different wood case. It almost, 
see if any of these are early models with the etching. No, so they do have the early models that have like a champagne front. And it's actually, instead of this, this text being on top of the aluminum, it's actually etched in. So neither of these are like that. So that means it's not the very early model, but highly collectible, the most popular Marantz there is. And just a beautiful product. I had fun. This was really cool. It's nice to find vintage hi-fi and find it in Texas. I think we had a successful day between traveling down from Dallas into Austin. Lots of vintage hi-fi so far, but there's even more to come. So I can't wait to see what's next.